Okay. Our next guest is uh, on the cover of this week's Rolling Stone magazine and is uh, one of the stars of Twin Peaks, which begins its uh, brand new season, I believe, Sunday. Sunday night with an uh, all-new two-hour opening episode. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lara Flynn Boyle. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the uh, to the program. A am I pronouncing your name even close? You were saying Lara. It's Lara. It's Lara. Mm -hmm. So L A R A. Yeah. Lara. Oh, good. N nice, nice of you to help me out there. Sure. Uh, well, congratulations on on all of the success. This show has been terrific, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been. It's been great. And you begin your second season? We started, uh, uh, we've shot seven episodes. Seven episodes. Anything that you can talk about? Anything you want to talk about? Anything peculiar? Any surprises? Anything I can talk about. Um, well, on Twin Peaks, not really. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to lose my job. I don't know really? if I can say Do they say ask anything. you not to say things about the yeah. script, really? Yeah. Is there any kind of document that you have to sign? Yeah, we have to sign. Well, every week when we get our scripts, we have to sign out that we got our scripts. Right. And then when we're done with the episode, we have to give them back, and right. then they shred them. Same thing here. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I, di I didn't realize that you, that you were in uh, Dead Poet Society. Well, and then we were talking about it this afternoon, and there's sort of a story about that, isn't there? Well, I was in Dead Poets when we shot it, but um, I thought I was in it, and then the night that uh, it was premiering, I went to go s see the movie, and they called up and said I probably wouldn't want to go. Now, who, who makes this call? Who do you get this call from? Um, an assistant. Usually you call and call all day long, and nobody returns your phone calls, right. and then about a half an hour before you leave, somebody calls, and you have no idea who it is. Some, but somebody from the motion picture company, somebody from the studio, or...? Yeah, it was somebody from Disney. I don't know who it was. <laughs> somebody yeah. and they called up and said I wouldn't want to go and said I wasn't in it anymore so um, I, I didn't go see it and I decided I'd done a movie that had just come out right now why why did they say why you weren't in it anymore no really No. you never heard why you weren't in the film <laughs> and, and and what part what part did you play in the movie well I play, there was there was another storyline I mean of course we used to say that but there was there was another storyline mm -hmm. separate from what they were doing right. And I played a, a dorky girl in it who kind of blossomed at the end. Right. And one of the guys, the guy that kills himself in it, right. he kind of has a crush on me. See, I'd like to see that. I'd like to me see this too. movie. Me too. I would have liked to see that too. But so this sounds to me like it was a significant part of the film. I thought it was. Yeah. And so that was it. A, what, <laughs> Was it a, a, a just a, a time consideration, probably? That's what they said. Yeah. Okay. That's what they said. So you must have been sad about this to get this news the night of the premiere. Huh? We, are, I was pretty freaked out, so I decided that I'd go see my movie that had opened. That wasn't a really great movie, but what I'd was go that see. One? It was called How I Got Into College. How I Got Into College. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I went to go see it, and I went to the theater, and they said it wasn't going to be playing because Dead Poets was opening up there. Oh. So about, you know, I saw the cast members starting to come, and, and I left, and I decided the next day that I had to see it to see why they cut me out. Yeah. So I went with my mom. We're sitting in the theater, and we're watching it, and the whole movie, I mean, there's like shots of birds flying over fields, 10-minute long things, you know, nobody on screen. <laughs> and I kept thinking, I could have been there. I could have yeah. done that. So... I, by that point, I'm crying, and I'm crying hysterically, and the movie ends, and uh, I turn to my mom, and I say, you know, give me your sunglasses, because all these people are coming out of the theater crying, and they have cameras for people saying, you know, how did you like the movie? And I knew I'd be crying, and they'd come up to me and say, oh, it was so great, I'm crying, it was wonderful. So I didn't want anybody to know that I was crying, because it was not a great movie, but I was edited out and everything. <laughs> but that, so, would look, that would look great in one of those commercials for it the would, film. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that was the one edited out. So I get out, I get out to get in the car, and my car was towed away. And, and wow. <laughs> Man, so you mean they're not happy enough just to no. cut you out of the film. They tow my car away. Then they have to come and tow your car. That's ugly. Yeah. Um, but you've bounced back, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, good for you. Uh, now, where are you from originally? Chicago. Yeah, do you like Chicago? I love it. Do you still live there? No. Yeah, where do you live now? In L.A. Yeah, do you like Los Angeles? No. Uh, so, oh, that's interesting. You, you, you're living in a city that you don't like, and the city that you do like, you, yeah. you ever get to go back? Well, I'm going to go back for Thanksgiving. I haven't been back. That'll be a year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be what, nice. What if the marching band meets you at the airport? Wouldn't That'd that be, be nice? great. I'd yeah. love it. And do you spend time here in New York? Uh, occasionally. I, I, I try to come with people who know New York, because I don't really know it. And the last time I was here, I had gotten into a cab, and... <laughs> this guy had all this Elvis stuff all yeah. over the cab, yeah. and he was playing a lot of Elvis music, and, and when I got out to pay, you know, I opened the door and the light goes on. Right. 
And uh, he saw my boots, and I had on blue suede boots. Oh, man. And he turned to me, and he started crying. He said, said, Elvis had a pair of shoes like that. So I spent like 15 minutes calming this taxi driver. You know, you know, it might have been Elvis. It might have. Uh, all right, one more time. Your name, your name again? Laura. Laura. I'm sorry if I mangled it earlier. It's a pleasure it's to meet okay. you and, and have another great season on the show. We, uh, we have to go to the back. Musical question, everything is you? Have a nice weekend, folks. Good night, everybody.